Hey friends, Rachel Alford here from Cozy Nooks Designs, and today we're going to go over how to make the Taylor's version pillow. This is the crochet one. I am doing a knit one as well, but today we'll just go over the crochet one. I'm so excited about this design. It's double sided, and I knew I wanted to base it off of my favorite Taylor Swift album, and I was having trouble deciding what that was, um, but I did choose Lover. See my earrings? Lover. I wanted a sunset, purple, blues. Here is my inspo pick. You can see the album, the Lover album, and the colors associated with that album. So what do you think? Did I get the colors right? Let me know in the comments. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do the tapestry crochet for this pattern. I also have a free blog post that details lots of ways and tips and tricks to do um, this pattern and I'll link that below. There also is a link to the graph digitally so that you can track it digitally and not have to print it off. So um, you can find that on the blog post. It's super helpful and handy, and you can just track your individual progress on that. So let's grab our hook and yarn and let's get started. These are the materials you'll need for the Taylor's version pillow. You'll need an 18 inch pillow form. The chart to make, the crochet pattern. Most people find it easiest to use the chart. You'll need scissors, tapestry needle, a size H 5.0 millimeter crochet hook, and then I chose three different complementary colors for this design. Um, the main base of the pillow is worked up in Lion Brand Mandala Ombre in the color Serene. And I use two cakes of this yarn for the pillow. And then the two complementary colors that I used, I used I Love This Yarn, and this one is Amethyst, and this blue is called Medium Blue. So for this pattern, you have the option to um, track digitally so you don't have to print out the chart. So if you go to the blog post that I have, I have a link to here so that you can track digitally. It will bring you to this page here and you'll click this little location um, symbol right here. And then you can track individually your process, your progress on this chart. So you can go up and down, you can zoom in, zoom out, scroll right, left and right. So it's really handy to use this digital version. You can do it on your cell phone if you need to. Obviously it's a lot harder to see on your cell phone, but you can do it on your cell phone. Each square on this chart indicates one single crochet. So you can see here, for this purple, we have one and then two purple, so that's two single crochet, and then we have one, two, three of the base of the pillow, which is our serene pink orange color. So we then have one, two, three. Whoops, that made it go crazy. So um, that's how you read the chart. So let's go ahead and make the pillow. You can see I've already made the first nine rows of the pillow because you can see, or sorry, eight rows because you can see the color work starts on row nine for the second side of the pillow. So on row nine is when you add in the second color. So I made eight single crochet rows. You can see here, I've made my eight, so I am ready to do row nine. So let's do that together. The first thing that we need to do is chain one which does not count as a stitch, and now we are ready to read the chart. So it says that we work five, six, seven of the serene, and then we switch to purple. So where I'm going to do seven single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is our last before the color change, and so we need to change colors mid-stitch. So let me grab my complementary color. All right, so to do this last stitch before we um, switch completely to the purple, 
we need to switch colors mid-stitch. So I yarn over, draw up a loop like normal for single crochet, and then I'm going to bring my old color forward and hold it with my thumb, grab my new color and put it on my hook, and then complete the stitch in the new color like that. And then I'm going to bring my old color to the back of the work. Okay, so then it says we need to do two purple, three of the, I'm just gonna say gray because that's what the chart is, three gray and then two purple. So two, three, two. So I'm going to do one single crochet in the new color and then two single crochets. So, oh, I forgot to mention this. When you, so we need to have our serene color right here to pick up. So I need to be carrying this yarn on the back side of my work so that it is ready for me to pick it up and single crochet with it for this stitch. So when I single crochet with purple, I am carrying the yarn across. So I just have it laid over my hook and I hold it with my middle finger. That's usually how I do it. You can see on the back side, I'm holding it with my middle finger here and I'm just carrying it along. So there's one stitch and you can see it is trapped in that wrong side in that stitch, it's trapped there. Okay, so then let's do our single crochet again. This is our last single crochet before the color change. So we're gonna do a color change just like we did last time. So I'm gonna stop mid stitch, bring my color forward, pick up my new color, and then yarn under. And if you are wondering why you yarn over, I have quite a few posts and videos talking about this. I'll link one here. Um, it just makes cleaner lines and transitions for tapestry crochet, so make sure you yarn Oh, under because usually you yarn over to complete. For this, we're gonna yarn under like that. And then you give it a little bit of a tug, not too much because you want to um, make sure it doesn't cinch the fabric. And now I'm ready to crochet with this color. I need to do three with this color. So again, I'm going to hold this roll to the back of my work and I'm gonna crochet over it. So I'm gonna do one, two, and three. I'm gonna stop mid stitch for that last third single crochet, bring my old color forward, pick up my new color, yarn under, and complete the stitch. Now I'm ready to do my next color change here, which is two purple, and then it's one, two, three, four. Oh no, oh my gosh. Did you guys just see the show that I was watching? I'm so embarrassed. Love is Blind just popped up on my Netflix. Yes, I watched it. Yes, it's drama. Yes, it's reality trash, okay? Judge me. <laughs> okay, now I can't even remember what we're doing. Okay, we've done, okay, so we have to do two purple and then four of the serene. Okay, two purple, one and two. I'm gonna stop and pick up my new color and then do four, one, two, three, four, stop, switch colors, and I'm ready to do my next. Um, color here. So it's three purple, four gray, two purple. So three, four, and two. So we're gonna do three of this. One, two, three. Stop mid stitch, switch colors, yarn under, give it a tug. Now we need to do four, one, two, three, four, stop, switch colors, pick up the new color, 
and now two for this one. So one, do half of the second one, stop, switch colors. Do you see the rhythm of this now? Once you get the rhythm, it's it becomes very therapeutic and you don't have to think about it too much. Okay, so we are, we just did these two for the eye. So now we have two, four, three. Let's do that together. Two, one, two. Switch to purple. Now four, one, two, three, four. Don't complete the stitch with purple, but switch to the other color. Now we do three. One, two, three, switch to purple. All right, now we are here at the R. So it's two, three, two. Two with the purple. Three with the serene. And then two with the purple. Two, three, two with the purple, switch back to serene. And if you're wondering, oh, how are you able to crochet without your yarn getting all messed up and tangled? Don't worry, it does. <laughs> I will, well, I'm gonna tell you on camera that I untangle it at the end of each row, but in all reality, what I actually do is I will crochet as far as I can until the yarn will not budge because it's so tangled, and then I untangle it. Is that the best way to do it? No. Am I lazy? Yes. <laughs> Judge me, again, you can just drop the, ju drop, drop the judgments in the comments, okay? <laughs> All right, so now, oh my gosh, okay, stop showing embarrassing things about myself. Okay, one of the serene, and then we have six purple, and then four of the serene. So one, six, and four. So here's my one. Do six purple, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then four of the serene. One, two, three, and four. Okay, we are getting close to the end of the row and then I'm gonna show you how to do it on the wrong side. There's just slight differences that we have to make. So now we are at the point of the V. So we have two purple and then we have four, nine, 10 of the serene. And we need to make sure we count the 10 to make sure we did all these other, other color work right in this row. So cross your fingers that we did do it right. So we have two purple, one, two, and then let's pray for 10. All right, let's do this. Oh, and so for this part, I'm not carrying the purple all the way to the edge. I'm just gonna leave it here because for the next row, I just need it right where it is to pick up. So I'm just dropping it right there. So let's do 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yay, I did it right, nine, and here's our last 10. Once you hit the end of the row, you turn, chain one, and then on the chart, you hit the up, and you can see row 10. So we are ready for row 10. We're gonna do 10 single crochet and then two. So doing 10, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, got a runaway ball of yarn. Eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so this is my 10th stitch. So same thing, I'm gonna stop mid-stitch, bring that old color forward, pick up my new color and yarn under. So that is the same that we did on the right side. I'm gonna give this a little tug so it's the same height as my other stitches. Okay, so this is how my trick, you can carry the non, the color that you're not using, you can carry it like we did on the front, but typically what happens is you will see the color peek through and it doesn't look great in my opinion. So this is my trick to make it so that you can't see that color peek through. You need to float the yarn every other stitch so that it curves around the hole where the yarn usually peeks through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crochet into this one like normal. And then for this one, I am going to bring this color I'm not using and I'm going to sandwich it in between and crochet like that. So you can see where the hole is that it would normally peek through is right here. But because I floated it, it's above the hole and then it's going to go back down. So it basically does this wave and makes it so it doesn't peek through as much. And I have a detailed video that explains this more. I'll put it in the, um, I'll put it down below so that you can watch it if you're getting confused by this, um, but it, it's pretty helpful. So now we need to switch to our serene color. And so I just bring my purple down and then yarn under to pick up my serene and then give it a little tug. All right, so now we have four in the serene and then six in the purple. So four in the serene. So usually when I try to do um, floating every other stitch, I if it's an even number, I'll start off by just single crocheting and then I'll float the next one. You don't have to do it that way. I'm just, I like what I like, okay? <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna drop it and not um, float or not single crochet over the purple for that one and then pick it up again for this last one. And then I stop, bring my old color down, pick up my new one and yarn under and then give it a little tug. Okay, so we have six here for this one. So I just roll the color, the old color out of the way, single crochet normal for that one, roll it back up, single crochet over it for this one, roll it out of the way, single crochet, and then single crochet over it for this one, out of the way, and single crochet over this one and then drop the old color, pick up the new color, and you're ready for the next section. So you can see here how I am trapping the old color every other stitch, and it makes these little floats, which help hide the show through. So let's look at it, actually. So you can see this is my right side, and you can't see the floats at all. Even right here where the purple is very dark contrast to the serene color. You can't see it at all because it is floating behind where the hole is. We are now, we need to do one, two, two. So one in serene, two in purple. So for this one here, I'm going to single crochet trap over the purple and then change to purple. Now we do two, so I'm going to single crochet like normal and then grab my old color and trap it. Switch to this serene color and now I have two for this um, section here. So I need to do one and two. 
switch to purple. And then three. So because this is a th uh, an odd one, I like to start by single crochet trapping over this one. All right, so we have one, two, and three. Switch to serene like that. Okay, now we are two with the serene, whoops. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So two, six, one is where we're at. So two, so we have one, two, and then we need six. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're doing one with the serene. Okay, let's see what's next. We just did this space right there. So we need to do the I, two, three, and then five. Two, three, five. So we'll do one and two. Do three with the serene. One, two, three. Switch to purple. Do five with the purple. So I'm crocheting over serene, dropping it. Single crocheting like normal, crocheting over the serene, dropping it. Single crochet like normal, and then crocheting over, I split the stitch, hold on. There we go, crocheting over the serene. All right, and switching back to serene. Okay, so we now have three, two, three. Let's do that. Three, two, and that's our last one. Doing two now, single crocheting like normal, and then single crocheting, trapping that next color and then switching to it. So trapping this purple, one, two, and three. All right. Now we have two and seven. So two purple, one and two. Switching to serene and I'm dropping my purple and leaving it there because you can see the next row I don't have to plan ahead. It's right there. All right, so I have seven Let me Get this out of the way so we can see better one two Three four five six, and there's our last stitch, so seven. Perfect. All right, so let's look at the right side together. So you can see it's looking good. You can't see much show through. You can see we're not pulling the old color too tight because our um, edges are square still. Sometimes people will pull the um, color they're not using too tight, and so their work will arch in because the yarn is getting cinched. So make sure you don't do that. Um, I have a three common mistakes made in tapestry crochet video that talks about that more. I'll put it in the description so you can watch that if you're interested. Um, but so anyway, 
I am going to show you how to um, single crochet the pillow case together. Okay, so let's seam the pillow together. This is obviously my knit one. I already had my crochet one made up, so let's just pretend like this is crochet. It's the same exact way. I'll do it in crochet. Just pretend that this fabric is crochet, okay? So what you're gonna do, um, well first, your yarn is going to be attached at the top, and so keep that attached. And then you're going to take your other panel and you're going to flip it so that the right sides are together. And you need to double check that it is facing up. I have actually done that more times than you would think where my one side is facing down and my, anyway. So you want your right sides together and double check they're both facing up. And if you want, you can just start crocheting down. I like to get these little clip things. I don't, I don't know what they're called. I'll put it in the description. Anyway, it helps um, sandwich. So I start at the corner and I use my clip to make sure that the edge is lined up. And then I do the center. So for crochet, it would not be curling this much. Um, so don't be intimidated by that. Okay, so here's my center. And then I like to do a quarter. Like that. And then the top quarter. That way it helps me keep on track to make sure that I am square and on track and not moving from side to side and making it uneven. So you have one um, panel that's connected. So you're just going to go into the corner. Okay, so I went through both thicknesses and then you're gonna yarn over and drop a loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And then you're just gonna space these single crochets evenly down the edge. So if you do it at the end of each row, do that consistently down the edge. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just spacing them evenly. Okay. And what you're gonna do is when you get to when I get down here, let's pretend that I am down at this corner. We'll just pretend like I have been crocheting this whole time. And I reached my corner. This is my corner stitch right here. So I'm gonna work it once and then chain one and then go back into that same stitch and single crochet again. And that helps me turn that corner and give it more of a point. And so then I'm just gonna go along down at the bottom, single crocheting in the beginning chains, and then uh, on both sides, the thicknesses of both sides. And then I will show you how to whip stitch. So after we've done all three um, edges, you're going to leave the top open and then you're gonna flip it inside out, or sorry, right side out, so that you can see the words. You will insert the pillow, and then you're going to whip stitch this closed. I inserted the pillow form. Um, I did not actually crochet all three sides, so it's looking a little droopy on this side. But so you're gonna insert it once you've crocheted all three edges with the top open, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to find the middle of both panels and use this little clip to help guide me, and then do it on the other side, or the, the start. Like that. I don't think I quite got the middle there. Like this and here 
and here. So my yarn would be attached right here in the corner because I single crocheted up this side, but you're going to um, cut that off and you're gonna leave a long tail. So let's do probably like a wingspan, that would be good. So I have this yarn that would be connected here. Let me grab my tapestry needle. You can see that my pretend yarn is attached like it would be. And then let me zoom in so you can see. Along the top panel, you're gonna just go through both thicknesses in the back and then in the front and whip stitch. like that, and then you go back around. So from the back to the front, like this, and again. You can also do the mattress stitch. Um, if you want, I just prefer the whip stitch because I feel like it's faster. So you just keep going all the way down until you are at the end of the row and then you knot it and knot it again. And then I insert it into the pillow, the tail into the pillow, and then I just pull it out and then cut it. It will be secure, the tail will be secure in there and you don't have to worry about it um, coming loose or anything like that. So that is how you make the Taylor's version crochet pillow. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you liked it. I am Rachel from Cozy Nooks Designs and make sure that you give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel for future free patterns and tips.